Hello there my friends, it's been a while since I made one of these video tutorials, but back by popular demand I have decided to make again um, these tutorials. Um, also I have found some new features and um, some new techniques and skills that I think would be beneficial for me to show you guys. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of um, these already on the web so I thought I might share them with you. Um, specifically today we're going to be looking at the DVD Studio Pro. Now DVD Studio Pro, if you don't know what that is, it's a program that comes with Final Cut Studio. And it's a way for you to create DVDs um, that you make um, through Final Cut and um, you know all those different editing programs that comes with the Final Cut Studio Suite. Um, however, the only bad thing about this program is online there really isn't a whole lot of um, training or tutorial videos, uh, which was a big um, you know downfall for me, is a big learning curve. So I thought maybe I'd take what I learned and teach you guys, and hopefully you guys can benefit from it. Um, so when you first launch DVD Studio Pro, you're presented with this window. You have a couple of different options um, as far as a, as a layout. Um, you have the basic, extended, and advanced. Um, I always say go with advanced. Even though it says advanced and it might scare you a little bit, um, stick to advanced. It's got all the features that you need. And if you know the basic layout, um, it's fairly straightforward and simple. To the right-hand side, um, step two is to pick your video standard. Most of the Western Hemisphere uses NTSC as a video standard, and most of the Eastern hem um, Hemisphere uses PAL, so if you don't know what your country has as a video standard, just Google it. I'm sure you'll be able to find out. So below that, we have the default project resolution. We have SD or HD. Um, just pick whichever one you compressed and which um, um, you shot in. And step four is to pick your default language. Now, mine is English. However, if you have a different one, they're all alphabetical order. Um, just pick one like Perusian or Pash Pashto. I don't know what that is. So I'm just going to choose English and hit OK. Then when, do, uh, when we do that, DVD, stu um, DVD Studio Pro is going to launch up a menu, or more or less a layout, of the configurations that we made. So the first step that, um, well, before you guys start freaking out and be like, whoa, all these different buttons, what's going on here? Um, I'm just going to take you basically through what these buttons do today. So along the top, we have the you know, so-called toolbar. Um, on the far left, we have the import asset button. Now what an asset is, it's more or less something you're going to be using to create your DVD with. It could be a picture, it could be slideshows, it could be music, um, it could be a video, whatever. They're all called assets. And you just um, hit that button, or down here in the assets window, you can hit import and choose it. To the right of the import assets button, we have the add menus button, which is more or less a basic DVD menu. We have the add layer menu, which is basically a menu, but a little more advanced, and I'll talk about that later on. We have the add track button. Now what a track is, is basically something that you have all your different videos and pictures and whatever else like that and they're all going to be called tracks. Um, I'll show you guys some different ways of making these um, in, the, in the future, but for right now, we'll, we'll just talk about the toolbar. So to the right of that, we have the add slideshow button. Now I'll show you guys know what a slideshow is. We have the add story button, which basically is a way of you being able to rearrange the clips in your video to create a director's cut or something like that. Um, we also have the Add Scripts button. Now what a script is, it's um, basically a way of you adding special features to your DVD um, using coding and some special, you know, program language, whatever. Um, however, I'll talk about more of that later on in a future tutorial. Then we have the Add Language button if you want to add a different language to your DVD. Then to the right of all that, we have some different um, buttons for you to be able to, do, uh, to build your DVD or simulate it with. Um, on the far left, we have the Simulate button, which is more or less a way of you simulating what's on the disk make sure that everything is connected all right. To the, to the right of that, we have the burn option, which is a way of you just burning one simple straightforward DVD. To the right of that, we have the build option, which is a way of um, taking all your DVD information and compiling it into lines of code so that then you could format, hence the next button, um, a disk and have it being able to play on a DVD player. And then we have the build and format button, which is basically a combination of build and format. And all these features I'll talk about later uh, more in depth in a future tutorial. To the far right, we have the inspector button, so we can toggle the inspector. And also, right next to that, we have the palette button. Then right next to all that, we have the, I suppose, I don't know what you'd call it, but more or less a way of you being able to read um, how much space is actually being taken up on the DVD. Um, typically, the DVDs have 4 gigabytes of space on them. However, if you have a two-layer disc, those have a total of about 8 or so gigabytes on them, which is really nice if you have like, a lot of footage. Um, as for all of these different windows, they're completely and totally customizable. So let's say I wanted to add uh, you know, the assets log instead of having it down there. 
bring it up here. All I have to do is right click up here, hit assets, and then boom, I have the assets window. Or I just right click one, hit tear off tab, and close it out. So I'm gonna put the assets window back down here in the default location. So um, typically this is what it's gonna look like. Um, a graphical view is more or less a way of showing all the different stuff on a DVD in a layout form that you can easily see. Um, along with also the different connections between you know the different menus and the different tracks. So once you start connecting um, the, you know the different windows and the different menus and tracks, um, you can see them. All on top here we have just some basic different viewing options. Here we got no connections or all the connections. Um, we also have the lock button, which is going to lock these tracks. So when you try to move them, they won't move. And then all these others are just basic um, viewing options. Below that, um, by default, we have the assets log. Um, again, this is where we have all of the different stuff on, on the DVD. To import one, just hit import. Um, I don't mean import, you know, a track or a picture. More or less whatever you want to import. Then, um, new folder is just basically a way of organizing what you import so it's all straightforward um, and easily accessible. Next to that, we have the log window. And what the log window is, is basically a way of writing out what the um, DVD Studio Pro is doing. Um, so if you're trying to build a DVD, um, when you build it, you have the um, more or less, I suppose, the build window, which is going to be showing everything that you're doing to build the DVD. So if there's a problem in the building process, we'll be able to see that. Same thing with encoding and simulating. Then to the right of all that, we have the tracks window. And with these tracks, um, basically, they're kind of basically like Final Cut. We have the video one layer. Um, below that, we have all the different audio layers. However, one thing to note is if you have just A1, that doesn't mean it's just a mono track. That means um, it, it is still a stereo track as far as the audio goes, but um, unlike Final Cut Studio or Final Cut Express, they all use um, just one track instead of two tracks for a stereo. Then, um, I suppose to the right of that, we have the slideshow windows, stories and scripts windows. Um, basically, it's you know straightforward. Um, up here we have the viewer, which is me um, basically seeing what the DVD player is seeing. We have the menu option, which is um, a way of us kind of to more interact with it, um, add some different buttons, some different templates, whatnot like that. Then the connections windows is a way for us to visually see as far as like an up and down menu sort of a way of um, seeing all the different connections between everything and making sure it's all connected well. Then to the right of all that, we have the palette. Now the palette is a way of you, um, creating the, um, a DVD using some of the default templates by Apple or some of the ones that you customize um, and build yourself. So let's say I want to add this um, template. All I have to do is double click it. So I'm going to apply the template, 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 I don't know. And then um, we can alter anything in here. So we can change this to say new DVD or whatever. I believe these might actually be drop zones too. Yeah, the drop zones which more or less means if you have an asset in here, like a picture or a video clip, you can take that and put it into the drop zone. If you guys are familiar with motion, they behave just like the motion, um, the motion drop zones. Um, so that's that. Here are the different ones that you customize and what is currently being used in the project. Um, here's the styles tab, and in the styles tab, um, basically what it has is everything from the templates broken down into individual elements. So let's say I have this one really cool arrow um, from one of the different templates, but I want to use it in this one. It's probably in the styles window Then I just bring it in hit create button and then boom I got this brand new button kind of pixely kind of you know digital it looks pretty cool So same thing with text drop zones and also the layouts um, These are all just from the templates again. Those are just the ones by Apple You can custom build your own the ones from the project and what's being um, currently in use here we have the shapes tab. Now the shapes tab is again a lot like the styles where we have the different elements from the different templates all broken down. Um, but they're just basically shapes. Um, I don't think I need to explain a whole lot. But you know, here we've got some cool smoke stuff. So maybe I want to add this in there. And you know, maybe add some smoke. I don't know. Um, you don't have to use what's just a, um, supplied to you too. Like let's say we, we have a Photoshop document. Um, that DVD Studio, um, DVD Studio Pro can actually read Photoshop documents. So let's say we get this cool picture that we made, and we don't want to save it as a JPEG or anything. We can actually bring that in. Or again, it can also read JPEGs, and I think um, BN, BNG files and um, some other ones. I'm not entirely sure, but I'll get I'll cover it more in a future tutorial. Then to the right of the Shapes window, we have the Audio Stills and Video tabs. 
which is basically all the different assets, but a different way of access, um, accessing them. Then below the palette window, we have the menu window, or I suppose the inspector window. Um, it's gonna change depending on what you're selecting, but let's say I just have the basic DVD selected. Um, at the top, we have the name of the DVD, so let's call this um, new DVD. That'll be the title of it. Um, first play, so when we first open the DVD, what's it gonna launch? Menu number one, which is this menu. Um, here we have the generals tab, which is um, all the obviously all the different general settings for the DVD. NTSC, um, it's set to an HD DVD because we set this beforehand, so we can't change it right now. To the right of that, we have the disc and volume tab. So let's say I'm burning a Blu-ray DVD, I'll use a blue laser. If it's a you know a dual layer, then we'll use um, dual. <laughs> so that'd be like 300 or 30 gigabytes of space that you have free. So that's kind of crazy. Most um, standard, they use um, like standard DVD burners. They use red lasers, um, and single or dual, all depends on the kind of DVD that you use. Below that, we have the number of sides. So if you have a two-sided disc, we can say two sides or just one side. To the right of that, we have the region compu um, in copyright, which is more or less where you're allowed um, you're allowing your DVD to be played. Um, and then on the far right, we have the advanced, which is um, some embedding to embed the text data and all these different um, fancy things that I'll cover in a future tutorial. So, I hope you guys liked this basic intro into DVD Studio Pro. If you liked this video, make sure you subscribe to the, yellow, um, the little yellow button above this video. Um, also, make sure you like us on Facebook. I'll be updating the Facebook page every time I upload a new tutorial, so you guys can stay updated on Facebook as well. Um, if you have any ideas for a future tutorial, leave them on my, on my channel page beneath the YouTube moderator module. Um, we got you know, have a topic going right now of some different um, tutorial ideas. Thumbs up the one that you like, thumbs down the one that you don't like. And if you have any questions on this um, tutorial or anything else, leave them below in the comment section. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the future.